Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask everyone to bear with me a little bit. I'm under the weather here. But I didn't take any medication, just for the, re for the record. Um, I just, you heard from Dr. Brennan from University of Pennsylvania to start off today. And I just want to read in a commentary he put just in the very beginning, the few first couple of uh, sentences to start off where we're kind of coming from on this. Dr. Brennan says, quote, imagine walking out of your doctor's office just as a pharmaceutical sales rep is walking in. The rep shows up with lunch for your doctor and the staff and is carrying brochures about a medication your doctor just prescribed for you. It would make you wonder, wouldn't it? Am I about to start a treatment that my doctor thinks is best for me, or is this a product of someone's free lunch, unquote? And when you see that, I think you get worried. And then when you know, through multiple studies that the doctor quoted and others, that oftentimes that uh, overprescribing comes because of the gifts or the meals that even if it's small, and, I'm, and some of them are not small, I'm going to get into that in a minute, um, that the doctor provided. And you would, I think you would get really worried then. Then I think you'd start to get angry when you know that that, that, that uh, prescription then led to people getting on, uh, getting addicted and getting that slow uh, uh, fall down the hill into, a, in, into addiction and maybe being one of 100 people a month. And I'm going to repeat that a few times. 100 people a month, approximately, die from overdoses in the city of Philadelphia. So, you know, and Councilwoman Bass and I introduced this bill. And I know there's some question, is it administration bill? Is it who, whose bill is it? Well, I think we're proud to say it's our bill. And it's our bill because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and all we're asking is that doctors, reg I mean, I'm sorry, pharmaceutical reps register after the fact, give in their information so we can stay ahead of the problem. And that's the whole idea behind this bill, to stay ahead of the problem and bar any kind of enticement to the doctor. And that is for uh, controlled substances and what they call psychoactive medications, things that can become addictive. And it seemed to me, and I said, I, I know I said this in December, it seemed to me like a no-brainer. Why, why would you even want the question that the, the medicine you're getting is for the right reasons and not because of, of some enticement? And I'm not saying every doctor prescribes, uh, over-prescribes to hope people get addicted. I'm not saying that. But the results are the results. The studies are the studies. And 100 people are dying a month. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, as I said before, the councilwoman and I, we just wanted to deal with the facts. We just wanted to show the, uh, and try to get the right thing done. The councilwoman, as the chair of the Public Health Committee, twice continued a hearing so that we could try to work something out. We held the bill in December from the full council to try to work something out. And I know you, that was at your request also. But we found out pretty soon we were being played. That wasn't an honest discussion. At the first meeting, uh, Fauna and some, of their, uh, some others came in. They didn't even provide any written amendments, any, any change. Basically just tried to talk us out of doing it. When, we, when that was clear, then they went the opposite direction. They came in with all kind of amendments, most of which either would make the bill pointless or um, just had nothing to do with the bill. And we made a pledge at that moment, look, we will keep working with you, but this bill should go forward and we'll work on reasonable amendments. And last week we put in reasonable amendments. We cut the medications down to only 15% of the drugs that are out there uh, uh, being prescribed, 15%, the most dangerous drugs. Um, you know, we, uh, and we took out any references, any concern that this could uh, 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 um, affect conventions. But apparently that wasn't enough. And you know, pharma to me, my humble opinion, but I'll stick to it, they knew they couldn't win on their own. So they pulled other people in. Other people that maybe didn't even need to be in this. IBX, the, uh, the uh, convention center, the visitors people. All that, because they thought, well, maybe that could stop this bill. Because that's all they wanted to do. They, wouldn't, uh, they went into an honest discussion. They just wanted to kill this bill and, and show, that, show who got the power in this city. 
And, well, we weren't going to go with that. We were going to keep fighting for this bill. And I don't know where it's going to go today. A lot of members are betwixt and between. I just hope they think about it a little bit more. And I'm going to keep repeating. A hundred people a month die from overdoses. Real people. And speaking of real people, just today, a friend of mine said, her cousin, mother, four children, went in for knee surgery, got overprescribed. <clears throat> now she's somewhere in Kensington. They don't even know where the hell she is. And they think the next time they'll see her is in a cemetery. That's just one example. I'm going to give a couple more as we go on. And I'm sorry I'm taking a lot of time, and maybe you're lucky because my voice might give out before I'm finished. But this is important because we're talking about people. We're talking about people and we're talking about reality here. That's the reality out there. People are dying. And with all due respect to our friends in the hospitality industry, I just have a real concern with a couple of things they said in a letter. Because first of all, they, they keep talking. And see, this is what you do when you try to oppose a bill. I know it. We've been around a little bit. You don't talk about the real issue. You talk about over here and up there and under here and on the side. Okay? And that's what they keep trying to do. And one of the things that is in the letter from Julie Coker Graham and John McNichol, good people doing their job over there, is that it should be limited to opioids. Now, how many times, and I think we've gone on record a number of times saying this isn't about just about opioids. In fact, it's more about other uh, addictive drugs that are coming up. If we limited this bill to opioids, I think it's the equivalent of saying we put a smoke detector in the building after it caught fire because the opioids are out there. This bill will not stop most of that. In fact, the opioid use has already gone down a little bit because they've been out there so long. We're trying to get the, the next and the next uh, line of addiction taken care of. And she, uh, it is also written in this letter that this bill, although right-minded, is false promising. I don't know what that means. We never said it was the solution to the whole problem. We said we would sit down and talk about other things, but we didn't false promise anything. We didn't say it was a total solution, but we said it will have an effect. And experts say it will have an effect. And I think they know a little bit more than, in all due respect, the visitors people do. You know, and then they, they said they will work to enact real change. Well, this is real change. This is a start. It's not the, it's not the end, but it's a start. And, but what we keep hearing is, oh, we'll sit, we'll study, we'll do a committee, we'll do this. And I just remember Councilman Jones' statement about paralysis by analysis. That means nothing gets done for a long time. And, may I repeat, 100 people die a month. Now, um, these people, you know, Julie and John and all the good people, they have their own lenses. And I understand that. They got to worry about what they see. First of all, I don't see why this bill, because again, we took out any reference to conventions. This bill, they shouldn't even be in this anymore. This is over, as far as they're concerned. We took care of their problem. But the reason they're still in it is the pharmaceutical industry is threatening that just because we have the audacity in this city to put some regulations in against them, that they might not come here anymore. And they could ruin our economy. That's the kind of people we're dealing with. We're going to get held hostage by those folks. But again, these folks have their, you know, Julie and John have their, their lenses. But don't, don't our lens have to be a lot wider? Doesn't it have to include a whole lot of people? And again, let me give you an example somebody should include. Public Health Committee had a hearing back in December up in Kensington. And I'll be honest with you, after about two hours, I was getting tired and hungry, and I was trying to figure out how to lean out the door a little bit. But then a young man stood up, about 13 years old, lived in either probably Councilman Sanchez's or Councilman Squilla's district. You know, they intersect up there. And... Um, he said that he's lucky because he gets a chance, he gets a ride to school every day. But as he's riding, some of his classmates are stepping over and around addicts laying on the sidewalk. Needles stuck out of their neck. And he just says, you know, why is that right? What are you guys, what can you guys do about that? So what I would say to all of the members here, you know, we just don't have to answer to our friends here in the, in the industry. We have to answer to kids like that. He can't afford um, lobbyists. He can't threaten anybody in here. He's just a kid that wants to go to school. Don't we owe him too? Don't we owe him that maybe he can live a decent life up there and doesn't have to go through that chaos? Now, again, 
when there's a bill, uh, when you're trying to kill Bill, you do the whole end of the world theory. We've heard it so many times. World's going to end. People aren't going to come to the city. We're going to fall, fall into the great abyss. And that's the kind of things we're kind of hearing out of this. And, you know, I always think back to Councilwoman Tasco, and I think it was during paid sick leave, who said, you know, any, any, many times I heard about the world ending, and Lord, here I sit, and the world hasn't ended. And if we pass this bill, the world hasn't ended, but it ended for 100 people a month. <clears throat> and it ended for their families, or at least a part of their families. That's who we should worry about. That's who should have the priority here. And that's what this vote will come down to, in my opinion, is priority. Now, please, get me right. I don't think any of the 17 of us don't care about this issue. None of us want to see this happen. None of us want to see what's happening in Kensington. Nobody wants to see people on Chester Street <clears throat> with their dogs lying there. Nobody wants to see people dying. But are we going to do something? Even a, and this is, this is not, I'll be the first one because we've been, we've been real here. We've been telling the truth. We're not saying it's a solution. I'll keep repeating that. But it's something. We need to move forward. We need to show people that we're doing something substantive. And this is substantive. And if it saves 10, 20, 30 percent of those people, and I think it could, isn't that worth it? They're people's lives. And all we're asking the pharmaceutical reps is to work a little harder. Work a little harder to get into your meetings. Don't have to come in with pizza and steaks. And by the way, it must be more than pizza and steaks, because again, we're hearing from these high-priced restaurants they're going to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not about pizza and steaks and ham sandwiches, I guess. I don't know what it's about. It's pretty, it's pretty bad when the opponents can't even get their own story straight. And we've been straight. We've been saying the same thing the whole time. So, you know, I, I hate to put people on the spot. It's not my style. But after a while, you've got to make a decision. You've got to show, you've got to take a, a stand on what is the most important thing. Some people are going to be upset with us. I understand that. You know, but there's a lot of people that, that we're going to help if we pass this bill. I truly believe it. And maybe there's little pieces, and it doesn't take effect for 180 days, so there's little pieces that maybe we can, uh, we can work in. But, you know, we just have to think, why are these people fighting this bill so hard? Why are they fighting it that hard? Just because they can't bring a sandwich in? It's got to be more gone than that. Or are they just trying to bully us? Or are they just trying to show that they're going to knock down anything that a city does. Well, you know, look, I wasn't a tough guy, but I hung around tough guys. I was smart enough to do that when I was a kid. And I know you stand up to bullies. And we got to stand up here. And we got to stand up for people. We got to stand up for those hundred people that die each year and their families. <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. I'm sorry. One last thing. There's another group of people who's going to be looking at us at what we do today. And there are people that right now don't know who we are. Maybe don't even know city council meets in room 400 on a Thursday. And that may sound strange that they're looking at us now, but here's what I mean. If we pass this bill and it takes effect, there's going to be people who are going to go into a doctor's office, and because that doctor did not get any kind of enticement, he, he much more likely not to overprescribe. And instead of going down that hill of getting, in, uh, of, of getting into uh, addiction, in, prostitution, in stealing, in laying in some uh, uh, doorway somewhere, and then possibly lying in, you know, in a cemetery someday, that, those people are going to just go about their lives. They're going to get the proper treatment, and they're going to go about their lives. And again, they don't know who we are. And maybe in two years, we're going to walk by that person on the street. Again, they don't know who we are. We don't know them, but we did something for them. We did something for them. And we owe them, we owe the people, who have, we owe their families, and I'm, you know, I'm sorry to get emotional here, but this is important. And we got to make a choice. we got to make a choice of what, where, where we are. We're not trying to hurt anybody, and I don't think we'll hurt businesses here. I think this is all a lot of hooey. It's the same thing they do every time we try to do something for people. Businesses come in and say, we're going to end, we're going to be so anti-business, and we're sending the wrong message. What message are we sending to the people who are dying? I'm sorry, Ms. Person. I urge, respectfully urge, all members of council to vote for this very, very reasonable bill. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman.